In case you're wondering, I'm shooting from sunny but deeply unwell California for the Pacific Bitcoin Conference. Meanwhile, back in the real world, yet another Federal Reserve official is warning that more rate hikes are coming in the wake of inflation that's been re-accelerating for two months straight, with more to come going by the warnings. Speaking at a conference in Alberta, which is the least crazy part of Canada, Fed board member Michelle Bauman warned, quote, inflation continues to be too high, so she expects more rate hikes to, quote, return inflation to our 2% goal in a timely way. Note how transitory has now been demoted to timely, perhaps again with more to come. Other Fed officials have made similar recent warnings, including Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester and John Williams of the New York Fed. The background here is that inflation has been stuck for two and a half years, core inflation anyway, which is the one the Fed cares about. They see that as real inflation. But that has now shifted to headline inflation speeding up again. That's the one that you see in the newspaper, and that is the one they most fear because it gets voters riled up. Now, that is not supposed to be happening with the highest interest rates in 22 years and the fastest interest rate hikes in roughly 50 years. So why is inflation going up again? Because in those two and a half years, the Fed has made zero progress on the actual driver of inflation, which is out of control federal spending. In fact, it's gotten a lot worse, with the Congressional Budget Office now projecting two trillion deficits through 2050. Instead, central banks have been coasting on freebies as supply chains unstuck and looming global recession hit energy prices. Now that the energy is taking back the freebie, as Warren Buffett likes to put it, the tide went out and we see who is swimming without a suit. So backing up, inflation jumped in 2021 because of obscene levels of federal spending to buy lockdowns. At one point, almost one in three dollars had fresh ink on it. Then lockdowns eased, the world digested Mr. Putin's war, and prices started coming back down. But the central bankers had already hiked rates so far so fast the global recession was now incoming. That hit energy prices hard, which are a big part of CPI. That's the progress they've been making. In the 2008 crisis, for example, oil went from $196 to $61 in just six months. In the 2020 lockdowns, oil hit $22. Bucks. For a minute, it actually had a negative price. So that cheap oil, alas, turned out to be very transitory since Joe Biden and his European comrades are now wiping out domestic energy production in favor of unicorn farts, and so energy supply is evaporating. Moreover, this gives OPEC an opening to cut their own production since they don't have to worry about American shale producers drinking their milkshakes. So at this point, the energy freebie is going away. It's even reversing because of the West's suicidal energy policies, leaving the government spending, which was never fixed. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is more hikes to crush the real economy so central bankers can avoid those uncomfortable conversations about government deficits or the net zero utopia that aims to return us to the medieval era. I mentioned recently that we're seeing warnings that bonds could go a lot higher driven by ongoing inflation and eye-watering deficits. Those together make investors wonder if Uncle Sam actually intends to pay its debts. Given $33 trillion in debt, any jump in bonds could be the spark that takes us over the edge. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.